family business in uh, the broader sense of things. And one of the key part uh, uh, does, should I say, entrepreneurs who continues to make a big impact in Kenya is Vio Penesa, who is the Chief Operating Officer at Penesa Interiors, who is joining me this afternoon. Many thanks for joining us. Pleasure. And um, really, family businesses have been one of the most difficult nuts to crack. How do they survive time and how do you separate family issues from running your business? Uh, we've been doing it a long time. Uh, we're turning 70 next year. Um, it requires a lot of passion. Uh, you know, you wake up very early in the morning and go to business every day. Um, but it also requires a lot of job knowledge. You need to know a lot about your product and a lot about your customers. Um, and I think particularly for Panesa Interiors, we have a strong team. Um, there's only two of us in the family running the business currently. And we feel that we have now developed a very strong team that will help Penesas move forward in the future. All right. And um, talking about Penesa marking 70 years, perhaps walk us through some of the key areas that the business has us, uh, should I say, a stronghold in. Penesas has a, a strong understanding of its customers. Um, yes, we have a, a good footprint in Kenya. Um, our footprint doesn't just uh, stretch across Kenya, but it stretches globally. Um, we've sent our products all the way to Canada, to Australia. Um, the, the Queen of England has a piece of Panesis furniture in Buckingham Palace. Awesome. So we're very proud of that fact. Mm -hmm. And uh, just pick for us a picture of how the furniture business has continued to mutate in Kenya, bearing in mind that uh, we are having a fast-growing middle class, which is very sensitive on their tastes. Uh, taste is definitely one thing that Kenya has definitely sprung to life with. Um, look, Panesa started back in the 40s, back in the 50s, and it still has a very strong British colonialism amongst the public. Um, that, that British style, that Victorian style, is still very evident, especially in the upper markets and the upper criteria of people. Um, that's why traditional furniture and classic furniture is still a stronghold for Panesas. Um, even though we've spread our hands across modern furniture, um, it, it, the trend of classic furniture is still very strong, especially in East Africa. Sure. So talk to us about your footprint and uh, how easy or how hard has it been doing business in Kenya? Oh, wow. Um, I'd focus on the positives. Kenya has given me everything. Um, I'm a patriot of this country. Um, like I said, it's given me everything. I've gotten to where I've had to be because of this country. Um, like I said, if, as long as you're following, as long as you keep together with your clients and you keep your customers happy, um, it's a good place to do business in. Don't get me wrong. All right. And uh, how, what are your plans around that uh, there's a good uptake in the Kenyan market and uh, any plans to expand into the region in East Africa? <laughs> Well, 2016, 2017, um, 2016 was a very good year for Panesis. Um, we grew about, I would say, about 15, 20 percent um, in 2016. 2017, everyone knows what's happened this year. It's been a little slow. Yes, in 2018, 2019, we do plan on uh, extending uh, Panesis arms. We do plan on opening up a, a store in Uganda very, very soon. Um, and like I said, we've been doing a lot of business now in Rwanda and Tanzania also. We've just finished off the presidential office in Rwanda, which is, uh, which is a nice little touch for places. Right. And uh, speaking about that, uh, what's your strategy really for Kenya and even as you venture into Uganda? Will you be banking on pricing or the brand name or a mix of the two? Panesa is a very strong focus on its product. Uh, we, we really feel our product will do the talking um, in the market wherever we do go to. Um, that's the survival game that it's been for the last 70 years. If we can't offer our client the best product, um, we're second. Um, so the, the focus is still on making sure that our product is great. We're keeping up with trends. Uh, we're keeping up with the latest technologies, but still providing the client with that extra touch. Um, it is a family-owned business. If, if I don't come to see you, my father will. And um, I like the fact that uh, you're saying right now there are only two of you in the business. Um, from many people I interact with, uh, family businesses 
are very um, sensitive in the sense that, uh, for instance, you can meet with your dad and make a decision in the house or at a restaurant and it's binding. So how do you navigate through this uh, unfamiliar territory? Well, firstly, there's, there's a big age group between me and my father. Um, a, good, a good 40 years of distance, actually. Um, so you're the second generation? I'm the third generation. Third generation, third generation wow. in Penaces right now. And um, like I said, we have a very strong team. Um, and we owe it to our team to make sure that uh, we do things like daily reports. I still make sure that I send a daily report at the end of the week to let my team know what's happening. Um, if your communication isn't right within your people, uh, within your organization, um, if you sit behind your dining table and make decisions, the company isn't going to go far. Um, because like I said, there is a lot more than us two um, driving places forward. So there's a lot of integrity and ethics. There's a lot of integrity and ethics. Uh, we have about 150 people working at Panaces. Um, the product is hand, it's a handcrafted piece. Hence, there's a lot of focus on the artisans and the carpenters who work with us. Um, there's a lot of training that goes in the background of Panaces. Um, if you ever do visit Panaces, very likely there'll be a training session going on. All right. Uh, so it's a continual way of being able to develop and moving forward. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'll make an effort to visit. But uh, as we wrap up the interview, Vier, if you're talking about uh, handcraft, there's also the raw product, that is the trees. And as you know, Kenya has been trying to increase its uh, forest cover. And um, as someone who is in this business, what's your policy really on trees and uh, sustainable tree cutting? I have a great passion for forests and forestry in general as a subject. Um, yes, our main product is wood, agreed. We are. We have been sponsors and we are still sponsors of the Nairobi Green Line, which does all the planting in the Nairobi uh, National Park. Um, because we have touched hands across the borders also in Tanzania and Uganda, we have made sure that we follow through with a consistent uh, tree planting solution for different countries that we've touched foot on. Not only that, um, with our logger, the logger that we currently have, he has a cut one, plant two policy. So at least with every tree that we know that we're cutting down, we know that there's two going up in the background. Well, very interesting to know that. Appreciate your coming. Thank you very much. All the best in 2018. Thank you. Well, we've been speaking there to Vir Pinesa, who is the Chief Operating Officer at Pinesa Interiors, giving us some interesting aspects around the business and how to run a family business at large. Hope you got some interesting tips out of that. Let's take it to Walt Disney now. And Walt Disney Co. has struck a deal to buy film, television, and internet.